All right, um, I'll turn this over to Heather, Heather Koyak. Hey everyone, my name is Heather, Heather Quiet, and um, I work down here in Juneau for resource data. And I have put together this little talk on um, NoSQL and relational database management systems. Um, a lot of people think of NoSQL and it's one of the, um, one of those terms that is making the rounds again, and people look at it as a, as sort of a panacea for um, for all of their data issues. And I want to point out that NoSQL is very cool, and it does have a lot of really good benefits, um, especially when it comes to non-traditional, non-structured, and high and or highly dynamic data. Um, NoSQL databases are horizontally scalable versus vertically scalable. Um, horizontally scalable means that you can join more than one inexpensive server to another. Excuse me, sorry. And the database um, can be sharded across all of those inexpensive servers. Um, instead of having to buy one more expensive server to replace your, um, your current server if the data becomes too large. Uh, along the same lines, NoSQL often is able to quickly and efficiently implement what they call executing the code next to the data, um, similar to how Hadoop works, meaning that the data processing can be done in parallel and across several servers, which provides very fast aggregations and analysis of the data. And NoSQL is very flexible. Um, NoSQL databases provide dynamic schemas for unstructured or partially structured data. It can also provide true or more true, hi, hi, how do you say it, hierarchical mm -hmm. representation of the data, which is an issue that a lot of your traditional um, relational databases um, still have an issue with. Um, going a little further in, into the flexibility of NoSQL, uh, you, have a, you can choose from a variety of different flavors of NoSQL. There's column-oriented, document-oriented, what's called triple store, which is, um, or resource data, resource description framework, which is a subject predicate object storage system. Um, it, you can choose a graph-based NoSQL database, which is great for representing what could be represented in a graph with nodes and relationships. And you can, um, obviously there's a typical key value store NoSQL, which is, um, for instance, a JSON, um, where, you, where you store JSON objects. And there's actually many more. Um, so it's great for those sorts of data. And according to Xplenty, um, some more benefits of the NoSQL flexibility is you can create documents without having to first define their structure. Each document can have its own unique structure. The syntax can vary from database to database, and you can add fields as you go. Sounds great, right? Well, the truth is, is most data is actually structured or can be structured and can be um, put into a format that is ACID compliant. Atomicity, how do you say that? Atomicity, <laughs> consistency, isolation, and durability. Um, so, most data can be stored in a relational database, most data can be normalized, so most data can be stored in a relational database, which has many benefits for the type of data, such as not only supporting, but in the correct hands, enforcing data integrity that NoSQL databases cannot and do not guarantee. Um, the relational database model is definitely a tried and true model for representing data. Uh, was first proposed by Edgar F. Codd in 1969 when he worked for IBM. And he continued to develop his relational model um, over the next decade or so. And it's very much based on a mathematical um, framework, set theory and predicate logic, which is part of why it's been so successful for so long. It's hard to argue with math. Um, there's a bunch of different flavors right now, of course, of relational database, um, relational databases and relational database languages, SQL, um, but they are all generally 
based on the ISO and ANSI SQL standard. So what is normalization? Um, everyone who's worked on data, I hope, has heard of the normal forms. First normal form, second and third, voice cod, fourth normal form, and et cetera. I can sense the panic in the room right now, but don't worry, I'm not gonna lecture you on what the normal forms mean. I will say overall that they iter iteratively provide rules to follow in order to guarantee that your database system provides the highest possible level of normalization and therefore of data integrity. So normalization, why does it matter? Normalization equals data integrity, as I just said, and data integrity, according to Techopedia, is the measure of overall completeness, accuracy, and consistency of the data, which in general are very all very desirable concepts. Low levels of data integrity can cause various problems, ranging from very small problems to very large problems and very cheap problems to very expensive problems, even multi-million dollar problems. And in some cases can even cause legal issues, such as when you're dealing with personally identifiable information. So generally data integrity is very important. Um, However, normalization, 100% normalization is uh, not always the most ideal solution, even if you are using data that can be gen overall generally normalized. Um, this is, it's often the case where uh, non-normalization is sometimes, um, sometimes required for your data. A general example of this is when you're doing reporting. It uh, tends to be a lot easier to have non-normalized data for, um, for retrieving your reports. Um, of course, this is typically solved with a data warehouse or other non-normalized copy of your data, but I'm just putting it out there as one example when normalization um, is not the goal. And there, then there's, there tend to be a lot of little one-off situations. Anybody that's dealt with a very large amount of data has probably come across situations where you don't really want your data to be fully normalized, whether it's for querying purposes or just the structure of the data itself. Um, these are situations where you have a very a, a pretty deep understanding of normalization and of the of the problem space. And it's a conscious decision to not normalize your data and to put it in a different format. Um, this is very different than careless non-normalization, which is can run into all the all the all the problems that I mentioned before. And then there's cases when normalization really isn't the goal at all, i.e., situations where NoSQL is a much better solution. Um, NoSQL provides, as I said before, very um, very extensive flexibility, and for cert for Certain situations, that is, a, that is a very good option um, for truly unstructured or partially unstructured and generally not normalizable data. This is a good, NoSQL is a good solution, i.e. documents, um, graph data, object stores, et cetera. Um, NoSQL is a very good solution in general for highly volatile data, data that changes a lot, um, both in the data itself and in the structure of the data. And it's also a good solution when precision and correctness is not as important as speed and volume. Um, NoSQL is not very good at precision or correctness, but it is very, very good at speed and handling a huge amount of volume of data. So in conclusion, NoSQL is great for the things that it is great at. And um, I would argue with the caveat that a knowledge of generally um, good data practices, including um, normalization, um, is still required. And in my opinion, relational databases are great for pretty much everything else. And I think it's important to know the advantages and disadvantages of both when making a decision what type of, for what type of database you are going to use for your project. So in conclusion, I'm gonna conclude with a quote, one of my favorite quotes 
the bill from a guy named Bill Kent, sort of. <laughs> it's been improved, it's been changed over this time, but it says, the quote says, every non-key attribute must provide a fact about the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key, so help me COD. And that's it. Um, if you want to unmute yourself, if you have any questions or comments. Awesome. If you do have questions, you can throw them in Slack. Um, but thanks so much. I think that ends this lightning talk. <laughs>